Hey there and welcome to another devlog of our Sharks and Alpaca game development project. A journey we started quite a few months ago now already. And now as Autumn arrived even here in Japan presenting quite a nice colorful scenery, I was thinking about adding some seasons into the game as well, until I realized that we are going way out of scope here. The truth is we have a lot of stuff on our plate already, so let's not add on top of that quite yet. So what have I been up to lately? Well, I did end up adding at least a bit more greenery to our virtual world, namely a bush and some grass. Because details like these are what brings life to our game world. The bush was quite simple, it's based on the same procedural algorithm that I use for the tree leaves. I just stubbed the trunk a little bit and scaled everything down a notch. And the grass keeps it even more simple by picking random points within a specified range and connecting them to the base of the grass bushel and that will form overlapping polygons and I slightly vary the colors as I go. I've also been experimenting with some rocks on the grass and on the sand. But I'm not entirely sold on the idea just yet. The plan was to generate random polygons and stack them up to represent rock piles. But some of these polygons are looking a bit too pointy. It's still a work in progress and we'll, we'll get there eventually. The overarching theme here is that I would like to have all the little entities like plants and resources to be unique for each one. I've also put a lot of thought into using pixel art assets. But while I really love the pixel art aesthetics, my limited artistic skills make the polygon based art style a better choice at this point. And the big advantage is that it allows us to procedurally generate a lot of these assets for more variety. But enough about the visuals for now, let's talk about the most important part of any game, the core gameplay loop. I've kind of come to the realization that I've been winging it without a proper plan in place. So I really need to sit down and think about the goals for my project here. Initially this project was all about the learning process. I wanted to figure out how far I can get with just Python and learn what I'm doing along the way. And let me tell you, I did learn a lot. However, the more systems I add, the more I see the limitations of not using an established game engine. Each new feature requires tinkering with a bunch of pre-existing code and my lack of foresight about future additions is coming back to bite me. I'm not gonna deny that I didn't know this was gonna happen eventually, but the idea was never to have a finished published game. It was all about tackling a project that was larger than the few scripts I've written before. So in a nutshell, you have to know your goals. If you're out to create full-fledged games, by all means lean on game engines. Lots of smart people have already implemented a whole bunch of useful systems that work well together with each other. So your progress will be much, much faster. But if your main objective is to improve your coding abilities, I think it might be worth starting something completely from scratch. What about me? I'm sticking to the path I set out on to begin with. I don't plan on finishing this game anytime soon. I just want to learn as I go. However, reevaluating my goals like this has really opened my eyes a bit and helped me to cut me some slack and keep things more realistic. This is after all just a hobby project for me. That being said, let's finally talk about the core gameplay loop. While my urge is to make a game where you can build up your island over many, many hours, have maybe even some sort of industry trading and all these kind of gameplay features that really personally excite me, that would be way out of scope for a first game dev project. So let's take it back to the basics. The idea is make alpacas and possibly other animals survive the shark attacks. Kind of like a tower defense game, if you will, just without the towers. Every time you overcome an attack wave, you can interact with the merchant, get some upgrades or repopulate your alpaca herd. Eventually, you will succumb to the overwhelming shark population and you will end up with a score and possibly some unlocks for future runs. This is going to be the core gameplay loop of sharks and alpacas. And once this is all working and satisfying by itself, we might come back in the future to add more systems like farming and construction aspects. So what is on our to-do list? Number one, we need some kind of progression tree that helps you better defend against the sharks. Number two, we set up some sort of simple trading system with the merchant so you can choose the upgrades at every wave. And number three, we need to adjust the loose condition to be based on your alpaca count. So let's start with 
was the last one because this will be the easiest one. Famous last words. So as I suspected, if we look at the play loop here, we have our logic, the function, and it was a simple addition of these two lines to add a second loose condition. The first one is if the player is on a tile that is below the terrain threshold, meaning the ocean. And the second one now is if the animal list turns to zero, meaning no more animals are alive. This is simplified for now because the only animal that is in the game are alpacas. But if there should be more animals in the future, I can easily adjust that to a subcategory of animals and this will invoke the game over state. And one more thing I was working on, if we go to the game over screen, is a little draw score function that will draw the score on the game over screen, which was not there before. So let's give it a run and let's play a little bit and see how it feels. Okay, so we start out currently with a spear and one projectile. Uh, which will get us there, but it is hard work to kill the sharks with the spear because you have to wait until they come to the island and you have to anticipate when they'll be there and <laughs> I already lost, wow. So here we go, I got a final score of 20 and the level reached was only one. Let's try again, shall we? Maybe we can have a bit of a longer run here. Here he comes, last one of the first wave, gone, and there's our merchant. And right now it's about, I don't know, a 50-50 chance if you get uh, another alpaca or some projectiles. And in this case, we got 10 projectiles, which will be very, very useful to fend off the next wave of attackers. And another wave. The accuracy counter doesn't seem to be working properly. So I need to have a look at that again. Uh oh, that sometimes happens, the merchant gets stuck there. Right now I left it in because it's kind of like a bad luck chance, so you don't get anything for this round. I'm not sure in the future I might make this impossible to happen. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Something's not working well. My score got reset before I could actually uh, display it. That's interesting. Okay, the problem was that the game over loop is only created once when the game is initialized, but not if we replay a new map. So we have to reinitiate the game over loop class whenever we want to invoke the game over state. And this we can do right here by overwriting the game over mode with a new game over loop object. Okay, now we died once with a zero final score and level reached one. Now we can reset the map and start again. And now let's see if the score is gonna be shown. Here we go, final score 10. So this works now, great. Okay, we can actually somewhat play through the whole game now. That's something. But this will be it for today. Thank you for making it this far in the video. I have to say, unfortunately, my life is quite busy at this point. My partner and I got married this year and I will be moving back to Europe at the end of this year. So there's a lot of things to organize, to figure out. And this game development project is just not the highest priority in my mind right now. Once I'm settled and have built up a bit of routine, I will come back to this hobby project as I'm having a lot of fun with it. But this might take a few months from now. So I really hope to see you all then. Thank you all for being patient and thank you all for watching.